What's going on guys? Welcome back to another video and welcome to your stimulus check update, stimulus package and infrastructure update and daily news report for Monday, June 28th. Hopefully you guys had an incredible weekend, but let's get into the update for today. First off, I just want to thank you guys for always hitting that like button. It really does help out the channel. Also, if you comment and you see a comment that looks like it's coming from me, has my name, has a very similar picture, it will most likely have you send them a message through WhatsApp. That's not me. That is actually just a scam. Do not send them a message. Do not send them money. Do not send them any cryptocurrencies, all right? It's just a scam. Do not fall for it. Now, here's what I want to address today. First off, we're starting to see some movement on the infrastructure package. That is good news. We're also starting to see a clarification as to why lawmakers are continuing to push for that fourth stimulus check. Many are actually dropping back and saying that, well, not essentially saying, but more alluding to the fact that they're not, um, they're, they're not saying that they will only be in favor of a monthly or recurring stimulus check. So this is coming from more progressives, but they are starting to say that they just want to see the American people being taken care of. So I got some information there, and we're also gonna talk about vaccine passports. That's actually starting to uh, come up a little bit more now as well. So we're gonna talk about all that stuff in today's video. Like always, if you have any questions, ask your questions down in the comment section below. And again, do not fall for any of those scams. So let's get into the update. First off, the other day, we got some good news regarding the infrastructure package. As President Biden kind of pulled back his statement and said that he's not going to link the bipartisan bill to the, the budget reconciliation. Well, that is good news. And the reason why this is good news is because after he said this, this was actually something that many people were not expecting. This was something that Democrats didn't plan. But... President Biden, by saying he was going or essentially alluding to the fact that he would veto the bipartisan bill if it didn't come to his desk with the budget reconciliation bill, what that actually did was it caused many Democrats to be very upset with the fact that those two bills were now linked together. Well, he said that they are not linked, and now with the two not being linked, Democrats will not vote against the bipartisan bill, at least according to reports. So, that is good news because if the two bills were linked together, that would have tanked the entire negotiation process and that would have wasted weeks and weeks of effort. So we'll see what happens going forward, but the good news is the two are not linked. Now, today, and I just wanna be 100% clear, the Senate is not in Washington. Hey, the Senate is at home. They are back at their home districts. They're gonna you know, probably do some stuff there, maybe take on a vacation or so, and we will see. But today, Senator Mitch McConnell released a statement and he urged congressional leaders to commit to passing the bipartisan infrastructure deal, even if Democrats plan to pass a partisan bill in the future. That's actually really good because he is, he's pretty much coming to the, or, coming to his own uh, you know, insights saying that, yeah, you know, let's pass the bipartisan bill, but I understand you're gonna pass a partisan bill at some point anyway. Mitch McConnell had this to say, and I quote, Republicans have been negotiating a bipartisan good faith to meet the real infrastructure needs of our nation. The president cannot let congressional Democrats hold a bipartisan bill hostage over a separate and partisan process. Now I'm calling on President Biden to engage leader Schumer and Speaker Pelosi and make sure they follow his lead. So he's just, he's pretty much coming out and saying, I know the reason why you want to tie the two together is because of Nancy Pelosi. Well, if you remember, I stated this the other day, this is something that the US progressive uh, chair, Pramila Jayapal, she actually said this yesterday uh, in an interview. She said that progressives were able to get Nancy Pelosi to commit to holding off on a bipartisan infrastructure bill until they can guarantee that the budget reconciliation bill passes too. So Nancy Pelosi, she thought it was a good idea to just say, okay, if, if this bipartisan bill lands on my desk. I'm not gonna bring it to the, the floor of the house until the Senate passes 
Okay? Not negotiates, not discusses, not plans, but when the Senate passes a budget reconciliation bill, then and only then Nancy Pelosi would bring the, the bipartisan bill to the floor of the House. So again, without Nancy Pelosi, it's going to make it very difficult to get any bill to the floor of the House. Without Chuck Schumer of the Senate, there's no bill that's going to reach the, the, the floor of the Senate unless he decides, yep, yeah, it's time to put it on the floor. So again, these two have all the power at this time. And, and, uh, by, and uh, Senator Mitch McConnell, he understands this. He understands how important it is to be the Senate majority leader. He's the minority leader. He does not have the power like Chuck Schumer does at this time. So even Bernie Sanders, he came out today and he supported the process where a bipartisan bill and reconciliation bill go and pass together. Bernie Sanders said on Twitter, and I quote, let me be clear, there will not be a bipartisan infrastructure deal without a reconciliation bill that substantially improves the lives of working families and combats the existential threat of climate change. No reconciliation bill, no deal. We need transformative change now. And we know that in a bipartisan bill, uh, there is a lot of good, and especially in this one, there, there's a lot of good that's going to come from it and a lot of good that will help out the American people. However, it does not, uh, this transformative change, okay, this is not going to come from a bipartisan bill. This is going to be helpful. This is going to be really good, but this is not going to be transformative change that Bernie Sanders is calling for. That would come from a social infrastructure package that Democrats are planning through, a, through the budget reconciliation process. And if the American people are to see any stimulus checks whatsoever, any direct payments through any of these bills, it's going to come from this. It's not going to come from the bipartisan package. It will come from the, the social infrastructure, a.k.a. The, the stimulus package. And this will be something that's done through a budget reconciliation. So... Speaking of stimulus checks or direct payments, we did hear a few lawmakers actually address why they are continuing to push for these stimulus checks. Now, some give us the, you know, the impression that th they want to pass a stimulus check because, well, it's going to help them with voting. Now, I'm not going to address that because obviously that's, that's a simple answer is, yeah, I, I, I support stimulus checks, but if I'm going to support them, you, you need to support me and you need to vote for me, right? Yeah, that's great. But, and we've seen that before, we've seen it all the time. But, this is what we're hearing now. The reason why many are in support of passing another round of stimulus checks is because they state that the American people have blown through savings, which is 100% accurate. The American people have racked up credit card debt, which is more than accurate. And they have suffered more than anybody just to get through this pandemic. And let me ask you, have you used up your savings? Have you spent all that you can on credit cards and pretty much max them out? And have you been suffering for this entire year simply because you do not have enough income? You do not have money to pay, to pay for the essentials, to put food on the table, to keep a roof over your head without going further and further into debt or further and further behind in your rental payments. That's why these, this group is saying that they need or they, they support the passing of a fourth stimulus check. They say that now that the crisis is manageable, not over, but manageable, it is time for Congress to get Americans back to normal. They also say that they will do this through big and bold legislation. They will provide for those in need with children through the child tax credit payments. But again, if you don't have children, this doesn't actually apply to you. They're going to expand Medicare. And this is going to help those that are in need. Instead of those that are 65 and older getting Medicare and qualifying, it's going to be 60. This is something that Senator Bernie Sanders and many progressives say they are not going to back down from. This will pass. They will not support a bill that doesn't include an expansion of Medicare. So this is, according to them, is going to make things fair for all Americans. Now, will it make things fair? Maybe. It'll be closer. But is it going to be 100%? You know, fair, apples, apples, oranges, oranges, absolutely not. It never will be, but it will be closer. So 
Good news is there is still a push for that fourth stimulus check and that is not going to go away. Progressives want to see that Medicare is expanded. They also want to see it's expanded far beyond where it is right now. And they say that with 95 members in the Progressive Caucus, they will vote al alongside progressive priorities and without them, they will not be ignored. Okay, so they are going to vote. They're going to vote the way that they want to, the way that they see fit. If their five main priorities are not included in the next infrastructure package, they will not support it. We even heard from Representative Pramila Jayapal just yesterday, and that's exactly what she said. So we will see what happens there, but they say they will not be ignored. Now, speaking of being ignored, here's another story that I want to bring up because this is something that I brought up about a month ago and many people shot this down. This was exactly what happened when uh, the Florida governor, Ron DeSantis, he actually shot this down just a day after it was even brought up. But people were talking about a vaccine passport and you have this passport and you have to show it to people. Okay, if you wanna get into this arena, show me your vaccine passport. If you wanna get into this restaurant, Hey, were you, have, you, have you been vaccinated? Yeah, show me your passport, right? That's what they're discussing. Well, the Florida governor, he actually pretty much outlawed this, said, no, we can't do that. Okay, that's against people's rights. So many say that yes, that a vaccine passport will help get the United States back to normal. But others say that this is a violation of rights and, at, and asking for proof that somebody has been vaccinated is not the way to go about it. One group is in favor of a vaccine passport and they say that this is the equivalent of a driver's license and a police officer coming up to you and asking for your ID or if you have a driver's license. What's the difference, they say. So let me ask you, if you were required to carry around a little identification card, a vaccine passport, maybe it's just, just uh, you know, something on your phone, right? Would you do it or would you be very upset when somebody asks, hey, let me see your vaccine passport. I'm just curious, let me know your answer down in the comment section below. For me, okay, let me just give you, a, you know, my personal opinion. For me, there, I think there's a way to do this where you don't have to require, maybe it's something that is, is optional. One thing that has been discussed, and again, this is just a discussion. Now, I'm not gonna say the businesses that have been discussing this, um, because I, I think this is, this might be a little bit insider, but anyway, uh, there are some businesses that are actually discussing possibly giving uh, their customers a discount if they have been vaccinated, okay? So that's something that has been in discussion. There are some bigger businesses that are discussing that, but again, until this is made public, um, I'm not gonna say the business name, okay? Again, that might be a little insider. So. Um, but let, let me know what your thoughts are. Let me know what your thoughts are because yeah, there's, there's, there's a, maybe a place for this, but again, in, in every aspect of, if, of our daily lives, walked into a grocery store or, or this store or that store or a gas station, whatever, do you really want to show a, an ID or a vaccine passport? No, nobody does. So again, let me know your thoughts down in the comment section below. And in other news, let's get into the COVID news for today. Health experts are now saying that here in the United States, we will see pockets in the US where the COVID Delta variant is going to spread the fastest. These pockets will be where vaccination rates are very low. These will most likely be in the South. And they say, but they also will be where there is a very low prior infection rate. The way we get through this, according to reports, is you either get the vaccine or you would have had to be infected, which means you would have the antibodies in your system anyway. So it has to be one of those two. So they do say that the South will be impacted the most. And this is one of the reasons why Arkansas governor is calling for more individuals to go and get vaccinated as quickly as possible to help the state get through this crisis. So that's what we know right now. But as always, as I know more, I promise I'll come back show you or give you the latest news and updates. I just want to thank you guys for watching. Hopefully you guys have a wonderful rest of your Monday afternoon. If you guys have any questions whatsoever, please ask your questions down in the comment section below. Again, thank you guys for watching. Consider subscribing and I'll see you guys on the next one.